All right, so we've got a great world for the player to explore. However, whenever he gets to the edge of the map, he just keeps going, which is kind of weird. I think it's time we added some scene transitions so you can move back and forth between different levels in your game. In this first video, we're just gonna get the transitions working and we'll also add a bit of a cinematic fade. And then in the next one, we'll make it so that we persist data between scenes, keeping things like our stats and health and being able to set the exact position of the player in that new scene. That's where we're headed in this video. Let's get started. All right, now the way we're gonna set this up is to create a collider along the edge of the map so that when we hit it, it knows that it's time to move to a new scene. However, for this to work, we're going to need to actually have a new scene. I've created this RPG2 scene here, and if you wanna see how to animate tiles like I've done in this one, you can check out that video as well. All right, so with your second scene created, we're ready to make our teleport object. I'm just gonna create an empty game object here called teleport, and then I'm gonna add a box collider. We can edit that collider and move it into place. And for now, I'm just gonna put it all the way along the edge of the map here. I'm just gonna set that as a trigger so the player doesn't abruptly stop like he's walked into an invisible wall. And with that done, we can create our script. I'm gonna call this one scene changer and we can open that up. Now this is going to be a relatively simple script, at least for this point. What we're just gonna do is first of all, get rid of our start and update methods. And then we're gonna make a variable at the top. This one's gonna be a public string called scene to load. This is just going to make it so that in Unity, when we put this script on an object, it will have a box here where we can just type in the name of the scene that we want it to transfer us to. In my case, that's going to be RPG2. Now we just want to make it so that we actually load that scene. So for that, we're going to use a private void on trigger enter method. And all we're going to do is whenever we enter this trigger, we're going to check to see if the collision object hitting it is in fact the player. We'll use a tag for this. Now for this tag to work, you will need to make sure that your player actually has a tag of player, which is, should be set up by default when you create a new project. Now we can use that tag to check if it's the player that's run into this object. And then if it is, we wanna to talk to our scene manager. However, it's not gonna like that at first, and that's because we need to be using the Unity Engine.scene management namespace. Once you've done that, it should clear up any errors. And now we can go ahead and call the command to load scene, which is a Unity created method that we can just call. And here we'll just type in our variable scene to load. Now you're almost ready to go, except that we need to add our new scene to our build settings. Now, in order to do this, first of all, let's make sure our scenes are actually showing up down in the asset menu here. Then we can go to file and open up build settings or build profile if you're in Unity 6. Now build settings will automatically open up a list of scenes in the build. In Unity 6, you'll have to click on a little icon in the top left here in order to see your scenes. And now we just need to make sure to drag in any relevant scenes. You'll notice I have RPG and RPG2, and you can do this just by literally dragging them over. Now the script already knows what scene it's taking me to, so let's go ahead and try that out. Now when I get in the game and I hit that collider, it does in fact transfer me to the next scene. That said, things may or may not have worked for you. The reason mine worked well is because in my next scene, I already have a player character there, and so when I transfer scenes, Everything in this first scene gets destroyed, and I now am just playing with the player character in that second scene. Now in the next video, we'll look at how to actually make the player go back and forth between scenes without being destroyed and persisting all of his data, as well as setting exact locations when we move. However, for now, we're just worried about moving scenes and also adding a little bit of a cinematic transition. So let's go ahead and add that fade now. I'm gonna right click, go to UI and add a canvas, which we'll just call the fade canvas. I'm actually going to set this one to a higher sorting order so that it renders in front of everything else, including all of my UI. I'm also going to set my canvas scaler to scale with screen size. That way, when I export this and play it on different size monitors, it will automatically scale to that size. Here, you just want to set your reference resolution to whatever you have set in your game view. Mine's 1920 by 1080. We can then go to UI and add an image, and this will actually be the object that fades in. We can then just click that and drag it to fill the entire space. I'm gonna call this one fade to white. That said, you could also do a fade to black or whatever you like by just using color here and then selecting a different color. At this point, we're gonna hit create. I'm just gonna to go to my animations folder and call this one fade to white. I'll then just hit record and I actually wanna start with this fully transparent. So I'll click on color and set my alpha to zero. I'll then head to however long I want this to take. In my case, I'm gonna go with about 30 frames or half a second and now we'll make it fully opaque. 
I'll just hit play on the animation so we can preview that. And this feels like it might be just a little too quick. I might just drag it and slow it down a little bit. At that point, I'm just going to go into my project folder and actually find this animation because I don't want it to play repeatedly on loop. So I'm just going to turn off loop time so it'll just play once when we call it. I'm going to head into my animator here and obviously don't want our scene fading to white by default as soon as we load a scene. So let's go ahead and right click here to create a new state. I'll call this one idle and set it as the default state. We don't actually have to do any transitions at this point as we'll just call this directly from our code and it will idle whenever we're not calling it. At this point, we can head into our code and actually tell it to talk to our animator. So let's make a public animator called fade anim. And now whenever we're about to fade scenes, we'll just tell the fade anim that it should play this fade to white animation. Here you're using the exact name that you put on the state, not necessarily the name of the animation itself, but just of the state you're calling. Now here you could run into a little problem. That's just that we'll start to play the animation, but if we immediately leave the scene, we won't actually see that fade play. So here we're going to use a coroutine so that we can add a slight delay. I'm going to call this coroutine delay fade. And here we'll just put a yield return new wait for seconds. And we can pick how long we want to wait here. I'll just put a one in for the moment. We'll then go scene manager load scene and just paste that in. So now we'll wait one full second. That's it. I don't like hard coding in numbers like this. I want to have more control and it's nice to be able to do it from the inspector. So let's go ahead and make a public float called fade time. We can make it 0.5 for now, but it'll be in our inspector so we can change it whenever we want. And let's put that variable into our coroutine. Now we just need to actually call this delay fade. So once we've started playing our animation, we can start the coroutine delay fade. It'll wait however long our fade time is and then move us to the next scene, which will give time for the animation to play. All right, I'm just gonna click on the fade to white now and make sure that the colors alpha is set to zero just so it's not in our way when we're working on the project. All right, we can just go to our teleport object now and make sure that we attach the fade animator and we can test this out. All right, now whenever we walk into the teleport trigger, our scene does indeed fade and half a second later, we transfer to the next scene. All right, so that's working pretty nicely, though you may have noticed that it didn't quite have time to fully fade. It felt a little choppy. That's just because my animation is actually longer than 0.5 seconds. So you wanna make sure that this fade duration is longer than however long your animation is. Now, the other thing is when I get to the scene, it feels kind of choppy how it just all of a sudden is fully white. You might wanna actually have it fade back from white at this point. So I'll just click on the fade to white object. And then in my animation, I'm going to create a new clip which we'll call fade from white. Here I'll go back to the fade to white, just copy both the animation nodes and then paste them in the new animation. I'll then just flip them backwards so that it goes from fully opaque to transparent. And now in our animator, what we wanna do is we actually want the fade from white to be the default. So as soon as we enter any scene, it will automatically start to fade in. And then once that's done, we just want it to automatically transition to idle. So we can just make a transition. But here we're gonna give it an exit time of one so that it plays the entire animation. We don't actually need any duration though. And so now when we enter a scene, it'll play the animation and then go to idle. And the fade to white will actually only play anytime we call it explicitly from our script. Now we're very close, however, if we were to go to the next scene, it wouldn't be doing anything. And that's just because our fade canvas doesn't exist in the new scene. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna copy and paste this teleport object and head over to my next scene. Once I get there, I will paste it in. Just go to my scene view here and make sure that I have that trigger set up in the right location so that when I leave this map, it takes me where I wanna go. And then I'm also going to make sure that I have it loading the correct scene. Again, for the moment, it won't necessarily send me where I want to go in that scene, but we'll set that up in the next video so that you can pick your location. All right, at this point, we've got a nice fade in effect. It fades out when we go to a new scene and then fades gently back in. Like I said, in the next video, we'll add some control over where we're fading and we'll also persist our data so that the player remembers things like his stats and location and that sort of thing. Hope to see you in that video. Until then, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.